My name's Monica Codet and I have been a member of the Transformation Movement for I think 15 years, since I was 23 I think. Um, I'm just going to read this out because anyway. These explanations do confront us with the extent of our upset and our current superficial, artificial, empty lives. But the whole point of them, and the completely liberating and significant thing about them, is that we can finally see the totally necessary, beautiful and courageous and meaningful story behind it all now, and our own place in that. And then we can see that the need for our superficial, egocentric existence has been made redundant, and that we are in fact free of it all to take up this all-fulfilling, all exciting and meaningful life of supporting something that can really save the world. Getting these explanations out to future generations. It's weird talking about personal details and so irrelevant in the scale of what you discover. But in thinking about what I would say today, my own life is the starkest example and evidence to me of the desperate need for the ability to fully understand ourselves the liberating and transforming power of these explanations and how dangerous self-help pseudo-idealistic movements are in their claims to solve the world's problems. From the age of about 16 to 23, I became increasingly paralysed by my own self-doubt of my ability to operate in the world. I had massive shame and self-hating surrounding that feeling completely useless and worthless in the world. The most help I got from anyone apart from my mum, three, three close friends and children, sorry, was a taxi driver who articulated my predicament for me when he said, there is no room or place for shy people in this world. I think the worst thing about it was there was this thing that was happening to me that I couldn't talk about and no one else could help me with or really wanted to know about it. And it was all spinning out of control. It was really frightening and the only thing I could do was keep trying to pretend it wasn't happening. And so I would just disappear inside myself and I became more and more disconnected from myself and the world around me. It was hell on earth and I was like the walking dead. I was so numb and so uncaring about anyone or anything around me. I became completely self-absorbed, preoccupied with searching for the truth, I guess, and driven by the need to heal myself and find the soul that I so lacked in myself. The good bits um, are coming, so bear with me. <laughs> I pretty much searched the world and exhausted every option, I think, and the realization that there was nothing out there was indescribable. I had to look seriously to myself to do something about it and literally six weeks before I got my hands on Beyond the Human Condition by Jeremy Griffith on my way home from overseas, I, I learnt meditation in a Buddhist temple in Thailand and I applied myself to it intensely until I transcended the crippling and depressing effects of my insecurity to the point where I actually managed to forget about it. I became completely artificially confident and had all sorts of grand delusions going on, like I was actually a soulful, selfless person. It scares me now when I think about it, but that's the power of denial for you, and thank God for it, because it allowed me to cope and got me to the very thing I was searching for. A friend at the time gave me a copy of Beyond the Human Condition when I returned from 12 months overseas. I absolutely devoured it in one sitting, as you can imagine, and I knew instantly that I had found the answers to everything I and everyone else needed to know about the world and myself. And I was amazed at its ability to explain our fundamental goodness in concrete terms, and so relieved that someone was finally breaking the silence and being honest about the extent of the horror and pain in the world. So some of these. Okay. I had to see through my own delusions though, and I had been seduced by the seemingly powerful effect that meditation had had on me. 
Mind you, I had to practice it so regularly to maintain its effect. So you can see that it's, it's a tool that transcends all your pain, but it doesn't actually deal with it or solve it. There are lots of pseudo-transcendent -transcend type movements that claim to be the answer to our problems, but they, they are all about shutting down your brain and extinguishing your ego rather than fulfilling it. The whole point of being a conscious human, of having a brain, is we have to and need to understand the world we live in as well as ourselves. Instead of leading humanity to peace, these movements are leading us away from it and it's scary that people are being seduced by these claims because the truth and the crucial need for the truth gets buried under all the delusion and artificiality. I guess that's why I wanted to share my story because I know very deeply in my bones that it's only the honesty of these explanations that saved my life and that can and will save this planet and give, the ch give children the answers they need to stay alive, in the stay alive in themselves. They can see through all our delusions and fake happiness to our upset and it's only acknowledgement and explanation of our madness and unideal state that can really reassure them and let them know that it's their world that is the true and real world. The fact that at that point that child gets the answer it needs, changes and reverses everything. It ends the need for denial and alienation from ourselves, each other and the real world and it breaks the cycle of pain and destruction. It allows real healing of our planet to take place. Humanity is free and can return to its all loving or sensitive world. The trouble is that we are completely committed to avoiding the subject of self. That is what keeps us so enslaved to our artificial superficial existence and why we struggle so mightily to recognise its solution and embrace these explanations. We've heard people say so many times, yeah, it makes sense, but so what? How does that affect me? Or I'm perfectly happy over here, thanks. These explanations are enormously confronting and do go into our no-go zone, but they do so because they can and do bring so much love to every human and humanity as a whole. So much so that it is unbearable sometimes. I personally was massively confronted and exposed by the truth of my own dishonesty in the delusion that I had to take up to cope. And the fact that I wasn't selfless and soulful, but massively alienated and selfish. But the thing is, is I can love what I had to do to cope with my particular lot under the duress of the human condition now, and not be ashamed of all of who I am. I am enormously upset, but the point is I don't need to worry about my worth as a person anymore. It's all been taken care of by these explanations. And it was really important for me to, to understand that I couldn't confront um, the details of my past and the hurt that I, you know, had in me. Um, and I did learn that that was really important not to do that. And it was completely unnecessary. So the fact that I could love myself now, in effect, um, that's the, through, through these explanations, is the very thing that unlocks our universal psychosis and releases the hold our upset state has over us. It dissolves all the insecurity surrounding our massively upset state and is the very thing that frees us from our self-confined artificial worlds and the need to keep convincing ourselves that we love it. And the truth is, we have had no idea what real happiness feels like under the duress of the human condition. But with these explanations, our human conditioned existence is over and now real life and true happiness is on offer for every single human. The best thing about the liberated transformed state for me is that I don't have to be self preoccupied and self focused anymore and I don't feel the need anymore to fix my upset state. 
I always remember what Jeremy once said or has written somewhere, that it's not so much our upset that is the problem, but our inability to understand it. I am still the upset person I am, but these explanations love us so incredibly much, like love you have never known or experienced before. And it was accepting the macro truth of these explanations of the Adam Stork story and resignation and accepting that for me, that allowed me to realise this and liberated me to be able to access the unexpressible and indescribable gift and power of this information. And from there, all there is to do left is support that so it can do its job and that is an absolute joy. I, and I don't think anyone else other than humanity's denial free thinkers, have ever known what it's like to be able to live for something other than themselves, let alone something this awesome. Every man can legitimately do this now for the very first time in human history, and that is so incredibly exciting. These ideas are so simple, like Jeremy explains. It's only our cleverly disguised denial that complicates it and prevents us from really getting it at first. But if you do keep persisting and following the logic in front of you, it will erode your denial for you. For me, it was like a thick, dark fog, gradually lifting and ever clearing, enabling me to see the birds, the trees, the sun and the sky for the very first time. It is endlessly fascinating and everything takes on new meaning or actually has meaning for the first time as things are explained to you not from a position of needing to deny the greater truths in life but being able to safely access them now. The most incredible meaningful world opens up. The real world becomes visible for the very first time and that has a profound impact on your life. It completely changed how I viewed the world and my emotions surrounding that, basically from a completely victimised position to an objective position. I basically disliked my father at the time, before this information, and blamed him for my problems. But being able to understand his role and responsibility as a man in this world dissolved my anger into compassion and a respect for him and men in general that I would never have imagined possible. If you do persist with this, everything will be here for you and you will discover the beauty and power of its simplicity and its ability to look after you. You will then discover that you are free of your self-confined existence, free to live, and enjoy the incredible gift of supporting the World Transformation Movement. Something that expresses the unreachable and expressible for me, and that is why I love it so much, is this picture that Genevieve Salter drew, that these screens here are based on. That's, that's her there. And she's standing tiny and free, with her arms raised in awe and excitement over the blazing beauty, scale and magnificence of the sun before her. A symbol of the freedom and potential that these explanations allow for all humans and all of our planet. That's it.